The single most underrated piece of tech you can own and have in your house is a NAS. When set up properly, a NAS should feel almost invisible. But this NAS right here, this Link Station N2 begs to be seen. And most importantly, it's begging to be used. What makes the N2 so special and, um, didn't I review one of these last year? But before that though, if you like this video or any other videos on my channel, please like, subscribe, and share with all of your friends. Spreading the good gospel helps me in the long run. And if you're looking for more content, be sure to check out Off the Console. It's a podcast started by me, Gardner Bryant, and Games Revealed. And of course, we talk about the latest gaming news and, well actually not just gaming, but also multimedia as well. Feel free to check us out on YouTube in video form, or if you prefer an audio form, you can check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever apps you use for your podcasts. Episodes typically release on Mondays. This right here is the Link Station N2. They sent this over for review, no money has exchanged hands, and they get no editorial control over my content. Yes, last year I reviewed the previous model, the Link Station N1. The Link Station N2 on the outside looks very similar to the Link Station N1. And of course, I mean, if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? The Link Station N2 features a lot of the same connectivity as the Link Station N1. But in many cases, they've been completely upgraded. In nowhere is this more relevant than with the Ethernet jack. Instead of being 2.5 gigabits like the original one was, the N2 has a 10 gigabit Ethernet port. It's the single biggest upgrade a device like this could have. It's the most relevant upgrade, and quite frankly, it's probably the main reason why you'd want to upgrade your N1 to an N2. I know that's why I did. And they also did replace one of the USB 3 ports with two USB 2 ports, which some people may not like, but personally, given I don't really plug anything into this besides the power and the network cable, it doesn't really matter to me all that much. And of course, storage. You have two spots for two SATA drives and four spots for four NVMe drives. Also something I never mentioned in my original Link Station N1 video that's also kind of relevant to the Link Station N2 is that underneath one of the NVMe covers is in fact a spot for a small USB flash drive. And of course inside that flash drive is a copy of Unraid because these devices do come with Unraid by default as of the making of this video. In my Link Station N1, I put in two SATA SSDs in there, one for use and one as a sort of parity drive. It's worked very well for me, and ever since I set up my Link Station N1, I've just been using it to edit videos off of. But I've also used it for Docker-based functionality, like for example Jellyfin, and things to support Jellyfin so to speak. But this time around, I have a slightly different setup, something you guys probably wanted to see. That's right, four NVMe SSDs. Now, I will tell you, even though I got the Link Station N2 for review, these storage drives cost me a pretty penny. It is worth mentioning that, yes, NVMe SSDs are not cheap. I mean, they're a lot cheaper than they used to be, but buying this much storage at once is not cheap. It almost costs as much as the actual NAS itself. So do keep in mind that unless you have a bunch of drives lying around somewhere that you can actually use, the actual price of getting a NAS setup will be more than the actual unit itself, unfortunately. But if you do the math and you, you know, religiously use Google Drive or OneDrive or whatever services out there exist and you pay a monthly fee, if you cut out those monthly fees and just use a NAS instead for all of your backup storage purposes, then yes, a lot of the cost will be up front. But not having to pay recurring monthly fees just to access the same amount of storage it's a blessing and you will save money over time because you're not paying a monthly fee. Though, I mean, you could also buy one of these and also pay for a Google Drive, but who wants to do that, right? Each of these drives are two terabytes each, which means in theory I have eight terabytes to use. But in actuality, depending on how you set up your NAS, in my case I set up RAID Z1, one of these drives will be a parity drive. Sure, I may only have six terabytes effectively, but not losing all of your data catastrophically because one of these drives fails is honestly more of a blessing than you can imagine. One drive fails, I get to throw it away, buy a new drive, stick that in as a replacement, and I'm good to go. Installing these NVMe SSDs is a breeze because it's a toolless setup. The only tools you need are your fingers, and to be honest, 
At first, I kind of struggled with this because I didn't realize the trick, which was to press these nubbins in instead of pulling the thing back with my thumb. But hey, I, I guess I figured it out eventually. These slots were really only made to fit 2280 SSDs, you know, the normal size you would buy for your desktop. Now, as soon as you install all of your storage, your NAS is ready to go. Honestly, you could just plug it in right now and it'll boot in. Just plug it into your network and then plug in the power and turn it on and you're good to go. You see this USB stick right here? That has your copy of Unraid installed, but they also give you a free Unraid key to actually register your device, otherwise you can't really use it. So while Link Plus does ship this device with Unraid, and yes, Unraid does work pretty well on this device, they do make their own OS and they do want me to try it out. So I figured, why not? I'll do them a favor. So while Unraid does require you to boot from a USB for, I don't know, security purposes I guess, I'm not entirely sure. This device does have a built-in eMMC drive, a fairly small one, just enough to house whatever OS you want. And so that's where I installed Link OS. Link OS admittedly has a little bit to go. First and foremost, and probably the most unforgivable part about this, is the fact that some aspects of the device, and some pretty important aspects at that, aren't fully translated if you use the web UI. There are some features in the OS that can only be accessed via the web UI, and some of those very important options are not fully translated at least not into English, it's still in what appears to be Chinese, and unfortunately I'm not that type of Asian, so I can't read this. It is a promising OS, and honestly more NAS OSs are not bad, but personally speaking I do think the OS itself needs more time in the oven. I can't really recommend this to any of my English speaking users because of some untranslated settings, and given that this is a NAS with potentially important data on it, it makes it quite difficult to recommend LinkOS to my English speaking users. That's my one stipulation, they need to fix the translations. But I went ahead and trudged on by using Google Lens to translate everything. And to be honest, there are some features I am still missing, especially compared to Unraid. For example, there's kind of a lack of customization. And while this does have Docker functionality, it seems as if they have a very limited selection of Docker containers you can actually select. Some of the more important ones like Jellyfin or MB are there. You are very limited in what Docker containers are actually available in the quote unquote app store. You can't even use Docker Composer either, which is like the main way I set up my Docker containers. There's a lot of customization that LinkOS is sorely missing. And honestly, Docker missing a lot of the creature comforts I have with some of the other OSs out there like TrueNAS Scale or Unraid. It's kind of a deal breaker for me. So I do hope they update their OS, I hope they get the translation situation situated, and I do hope that they get the whole Docker situation situated, because there are some pretty useful functionalities, especially in regards to their mobile apps. Which of course brings me back to using Unraid on the N2, and honestly, I think Unraid is super easy for someone that might not be fully tech inclined. Someone that might not necessarily be a full on tech admin, but someone that's vaguely interested in technology. And I have been using Unraid daily for pretty much over a year at this point, and I'm pretty satisfied with it. In some regards, it's made to be a lot simpler and just a lot easier to get into. Just put a bunch of drives in and add them to your array and chuck them in and you're good to go. But some advanced configurations don't work as well as you might anticipate, for example, ZFS. Out of the box, Unraid apparently can do ZFS, but honestly, you're kind of limited with what you can do unless you get some plugins, which is not a bad thing. I like the fact that you can get plugins to extend the functionality of the web UI. There are supposed to be operating systems that do ZFS better than Unraid. For example, TrueNAS Scale, that's like their defining characteristic. They're really good for ZFS. But I've yet to try it on these machines and honestly I can't be bothered to right now. Admittedly, my primary usage for these devices, it's editing, it's video editing. I store all of my video footage off on a NAS and I edit from that NAS and I do everything in DaVinci Resolve and it just works. As for what my server is actually running, it's running a bunch of Docker containers. And thanks to Nginx Proxy Manager, I only have to port forward so many ports, which is pretty cool all things considered. Now, I don't really know what sorts of home lab services you want to run or what you want to do. Of course, in my case, what matters to me is A, 
having a repository for all of my footage, for all of my YouTube videos, and B, having a media server so I can just play back media wherever I am in the world. Think like a homebrew Netflix or something like that. And of course, you know what else couldn't hurt? Having a full cloud backup system. Like, think about how convenient Google Drive or iCloud is for all of your photos and whatnot for your Android and Google phones. But imagine that, but you own all of your data, you own all of that storage, and you don't have to pay a monthly fee to access that storage. And that's why you should get a NAS. Now, these aren't necessarily points unique to the LinkStation N2, but it's part of the reason why I like having a NAS so much, and why you should have a NAS, even if you're not necessarily a content creator, or someone that stockpiles a bunch of 4K Blu-ray rips or whatever. But just knowing that all of these services run off of your hardware, your network, and you effectively own that hardware means that your data is secure, so long as your house doesn't burn down or anything like that. And that gives me some peace of mind. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high tech low life with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high tech low life, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description.